Hey everybody, Scal Crafty here again, TGIF, thank God it's Friday, hope you're doing well, you made it through another week, boy we got a great program scheduled for you today, uh, special thanks a lot of you to like the stroboscope we did uh, last episode where we just cleaned up the case and went through the insides, but today I'm going to show you how they work, and before I get to starting that, I think I have to show you where my origins are of why I'm so interested and why these particular items appeal to me so much. When I was a young man, when I was <laughs> a couple years old, I was born uh, being of German-Polish ancestry. I was born with some kind of fine blonde hair. And my father wanted me to have thick hair. So what he did, he used to take me to the barber shop around the corner from me, about four blocks away. There was a barber there. And he would take me every couple weeks to get a crew cut to thicken my hair up. You know, some, some parents uh, opt for braces, but my father, I guess he went to save money on hats later on. He wanted me to have thick hair. So every couple weeks we would trek over to the barbershop and Gregory, who was the barber there, he was an old Russian Jew and, and boy, this guy was something else. He was a... Uh, he was a piece of work, and it wasn't like an old-fashioned barber shop where you had people sitting around and talking. Gregory was all business. You went in there, you got a haircut, and that was it. You left. So there was really, you know, a, 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 except for people waiting in there, it wasn't like a, a meeting place. And uh, it was an old-fashioned barber shop in the sense that he had the magazines, the Popular Mechanics and Popular Science magazines, and he had the most fantastic Hallicrafters radio sitting on top of his cabinet that played every single day. And one thing that he had that always made me, was amazing to me, was he had a, a unit on his door that would indicate when a customer came in, because sometimes he would be in the back room, and if somebody walked in the door, this little uh, ringer went off that let people know somebody came in. It was called a detecto ray. And oh, when I was a kid, I would look at that thing and there was just something about it. It had these two beautiful lenses on there and it had a cross from it, had the reflector. And if you walked in, as soon as you walked, nobody could beat that thing. It was just, to me, it was such a cool item. I said, oh, I, I love that thing. And, you know, Gregory's uh, passed away many, many years ago. But uh, the build that his uh, shop is still there. As a matter of fact, uh, I, I walk at night and sometimes I pass it. Let me show you what it looks like today. Now, here is where I spent many of hours in Gregory's Barbershop. Now, if you notice here, this is unchanged. There's a house in the back that they bought. But if you look there, that's where the barber pole was. Remember the old spinning barber poles? That's where it was. And here's the uh, the frontage, and you can see the curtains are still the same, still has the same frontage as back, and unchanged. I would love to see what's inside, but that's where the detector ray was, right there on the other side of the door. So even though the outside is unchanged, I often think, I say, I wonder if anything on the inside is unchanged, because it's it's been that way for 30 years, it's unchanged. The same curtains, everything. I said, I wonder if that Holocraft is radio is still there. Or I wonder if that Detecto Ray is still there. I would love to go in there and purchase that from the person in there. You know, I've, I've been looking for a Detecto Ray. They're, they're quite expensive when you do find them. Too expensive for my blood. However, I do have, uh, I did pick up something that was very similar from the uh, old days that we're going to show you. And then uh, we're also going to talk about the stroboscope, which is on the same lines, why I got interested in them. So what do you say we get started? Looks like a great episode. Let's get right to it. Okay, to start off today, what we have here is a very rare and uh, rarely seen Rayflex. Can you see this here on the box? Rayflex announcer, electric eye. Now this is uh, my poor man's version of the Detecto Ray, but uh, this did similar, almost the same thing. And uh, check this out. This is, and you can tell vintage stuff. This is the original box that it came in, just the way you would get it. Came with some uh, instructions. Look, hand drawn. <laughs> Remember when things were hand drawn instructions? Dependability with simplicity. That's, that's, I should get that tattooed on my arm because that's something I, I'm a big fan of. And you can see here, 
it's uh, kind of like it was almost like typewritten the way it was uh, the font on there. And, and it shows you how to hook this up. And here we go. It was in if New York, East 4th Street. They moved from Lynbrook. <laughs> and I guess uh, they didn't want to make up new cards, so they just crossed that one out. Here, one-year guarantee, parts and labor, if this card was uh, mailed within 10 days. And uh, it even came with a little template that you could uh, put on the wall. And again, this is the instructions. Look at the aging. I love this kind of stuff, huh? It's like a step back in time. Let's take a look at what we have in the box. Now inside the box, you could see here, it came with the electric eye unit, okay? And you can see here it says uh, Rayflex announcer. Can you see that without a glare? There we go. Uh, electric eye product, and there it was, the New York address, okay? Um, little lens here. It came with a plug. This will plug it in, and this, <laughs> was I think 50 feet they, and there was no sense to have this thick wire but I guess they just used it you know they could have used like a bell wire this is actually like a lamp cord and here is the announcing bell can you see it and it's got the little three chimes on there nice plastic on here not like a cheap plastic and look on the back here let me pull this co cover off here there we go, just to show you what's inside. And there's a little solenoid, a little magnetic solenoid, and a bent piece of metal that I guess would act as a bell. Let's, uh, let's plug this in, hook it up. It's really not much that can go wrong with these things. This has to be uh, in this position here to work correctly. And uh, I'll show you how this works. Okay, we have it hooked up here. We just plugged it in. Um, there's the announcer here. There's a reflector. You can see now if somebody walks in between here, do you hear it? It just, isn't that? Now, what is this? This has to be 50 or 60 years old. And it still works absolutely the way it was intended. Isn't that great? This is very similar to the detector ray that used to make me go nuts watching it inside of the inside the barbershop. Oh, that's just beautiful, isn't it? Now, if you're like me, uh, you're probably curious what is inside of this thing. Uh, there is a little light bulb that shines on there when it's plugged in. Let's open it up and see what makes this thing work. Okay, I removed the three sheet metal screws that held the case on here, and I'm just going to pull this straight out. Okay, here we just have a glued-in reflector beam. And here is a little transformer, and all this is, look at this. The only thing here, I don't know what that is. Is that a hair? <laughs> it was a hair in here. But uh, look at this. The only thing that's here is this little bulb transformer and a little circuit board here. You see? And it's a regular bell transformer. And I guess when that light comes on, and there's a reflector here. See that little glass? I wonder if that, oh yeah, there's the, this is the electric eye here. So when that beam is broken, I see how this works. You see this here, this is the eye, and it sees the reflection of the bulb on this little piece of tilted glass lens that keeps it, I guess it's a normally uh, open circuit. And then when the light is broken, it closes the circuit let me plug it in while it's apart and see if we can't get some kind of a shock here. Okay, I'm gonna plug this in now. Okay, you can see there's that bulb here. Okay, and I guess that, there we go, that it rings when you uh, disconnect it, but that's very interesting. Let me, I'm just gonna clean this bulb and the uh, reflector, put it back together, but there it is, it's just a little I wonder if that's like a 12 volt bulb. You can see when I move it away from the reflector, you see, it activates the uh, the bell if it's uh, moved away. But that's that. That's still works after all these years. I can't believe Okay, it. it's all back together. I cleaned the uh, lens and the bulb. And it works just beautiful, doesn't it? Now, isn't that uh, super cool? I just love that thing. I, I Even as a kid, I thought that was the slickest 
invention ever. And uh, the way they were made years ago, they were made to last. As you can see, it still lasts, still works great. And they were meant to last forever. Today, this stuff that comes out of China and the, it's all temporary, it's all cheap, it's a plastic disintegrates and this is all metal. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's a whole different thing. Um, next up, we're going to talk about the stroboscope. Let's get to that. Now, I think that those, uh, those announcers are what made me kind of get into stroboscope. And when I found out what these were and how they work, they're basically to measure, uh, RPM. So here, or also to stop frame to, so you can read things like in the textile industry and whatnot. And I'll show you how that works in a minute. Probably you might have experience with these back in the day when we were doing timing on your vehicle and there was a little timing mark on the fly with the balancer and you had to align it and uh, you would use a, uh, a timing strobe, you know, which uh, a lot of us used back then. I still think it's interesting. This one here is a little bit more um, diverse. You can use it for a bunch of different things and that's what we're going to do. So let's open this up. This is a new one. And I'm going to show you how this works. Now, what all stroboscopes do is basically they put out a, uh, a flash of light at different intervals. You can adjust it here. You can see, and it has an LCD display. You can adjust it. So if you, um, you keep adjusting it until the flashes go faster and they line up with whatever you have that's moving, that will stop frame. It'll make it seem like it's not moving anymore. Now, what they use this for is not just to check RPMs, but you can also, like, if you wanted to see what belt number, before taking the machine apart, you want to buy the belt before you're going to order it, you could flash this on the belt until uh, you could read it, and then you could order the belt and then take it apart. There's a whole bunch of things you could use it for. Also for timing vehicles, things like that, checking to see if there's any d a distortion or lack of balance, things like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you, first we're going to turn it on. You can see what happens here. Now, like I said, the one thing you're going to notice, unfortunately, with the frame rate of the camera, you might see some bars moving up and down with the flash. That's the only problem like the old TVs. Remember, we used to have the bars that rolled? God, when was the last time we seen that? But if you look here, this is flashing now. And I don't know if you could see here. Can you see that flashing? Uh, it's, you know, right now it's flashing. It's going bink. There you go. Bink, bink. You see that? It's flashing. But you don't see every flash on the camera because of, uh, of the thing. But you can change here. I'm going to move it up here. Moving it up. And you can see I can change it here. And you can see how quickly that flashes, but it's only showing a couple on the... So let's let's stop frame something, and I'll show you how that okay, works. Okay, here I just put a piece of tape on the buffer wheel with a number four, or it could be an arrow, could be anything you want. As this will spin, hopefully that'll stay on there, this tape. But um, as this will spin, I'll put the stroboscope on, and hopefully you'll see this stop. Again, there'll be some bars rising because that's the way it is. I'll try and cut off a couple lights so it's uh, easier to see. And let's give it a shot. Okay, we have the stroboscope on. You can't see it, but it's blinking very fast. And uh, we're going to turn the, the buffer on. Okay, now you see that? Can you see the, the tape? It looks like it's spinning slowly, right? Now we're going to adjust it over here. I'm going to adjust it till that stops. The dot that I have the knobs back here. There's a fine and a coarse. This is the fine. And you can see here we have that. I'm going to make it go to the top there. We have it stopped right there, right? Just about there. There we go. Now, let's take a look at what it reads. 3582. 3582 revolutions per minute. You see that? Isn't that cool how that just stops? Now, uh, again, if I... Uh, if you want to check this, if you're checking the RPM, but we can also, if that was a number on a belt that we had to read... We could read that. Now, believe me, that's spinning. As you can see, that's spinning, but that looks like it's staying still. This is why I'm amazed by these things. Let's try something else. Okay, here's another one of my uh, buffers. Again, the RPM on this one's supposed to be 3,450 RPM. Okay, so you can see we. I just put a black dot on the buffer. Let's try this out here. Turn. Okay. Now, there's the black dot. Can you see it coming around? slow it down and got to get it just right you see it's stopped it looks stopped right almost like you could touch it let's see what the rpm is 
35.89. Again, this is close. It's based on 60 uh, cycles. So there we go. But isn't that something? That is, to me, this is uh, this is what I love about these things. Now, this stroboscope does the same exact thing as the other with the digital one. And here's the knob that you would see. You know, you would do this. You would turn this. It would increase the flashing. And then you would times it on uh, by 100 on fast, by slow, by 10. You see? So uh, that's all that this. This is all. That's all this does. Basically, it's the same thing. It creates a flash and it lets you know how fast it's flashing. Now, can you use a stroboscope? And you're not, <laughs> absolutely not. You'll never use. It's one of those things that very rarely come in handy. But it's just something I liked and something I thought was interesting. Last up, I just wanted to touch real quick on a couple videos ago. I had a, a few people say, "Hey, John, what's with your video? I got like six commercials on this video." That, I think, was uh, the uh, the camera video at the Connecticut Antique Machinery Association. I went over 20 minutes. And as you know, I'm not monetized, okay, by YouTube. I don't make any money. So, But they put commercials on every video now, regardless whether you're monetized or not. So they, they control. And I believe, depending on how long your video is, is how many commercials they put on. So I think that's why I got belted with extra commercials because it was a 20 minute video i try and keep my videos under 15 minutes um last thing i have to say is that uh if you don't have youtube premium and you watch a lot of youtube look i don't i don't suggest a lot of things you know but i'm telling you it is well worth the money it's less than 50 cents a day and um you don't have any pop-ups, any commercials. It's just such an enjoyable way to watch YouTube like when it first came out. These commercials are just horrific when they're popping them. Every, and the, and the pop-ups, it's just so annoying. So take it from me. Try it out for a month or whatever. I, I, tr I promise you, you're going to love it. And if, if uh, some of you that have the YouTube premium that don't watch the commercials... If you think it's worth it, just put those two words in the comments. Just say worth it. Because there are some people that might be on the fence about doing it. And I'm telling you, I know it seems, it is, money's tight these days, you know. But for the 50 cents a day, I got rid of my cable TV. I got rid of all that crap. The only thing I watch is YouTube on TV, you know. And, and there's so much to see. You'll never be able to see everything that's on there. If I wanted to watch the debate the other night, it was on live. You don't need cable TV. You don't need none of that. Anyway, thanks so much for tuning in. Hope you have a great weekend. We'll see you again on Monday. Remember, tomorrow is Zagre up in Colchester, Connecticut. Saturday, I'll be there. And uh, hopefully the weather should be nice. So if you get a chance uh, and you're near Colchester, you'll enjoy it. It's a great show. I hope you have a great day. Take care. Enjoy your weekend. Bye-bye. <laughs> Now, what is this? This has to be 50 or 60 years old. And it still works absolutely the way it was intended. Isn't that